If you have 50 bucks in your pocket for wheels and tires, and maybe three or four hours of time and some basic tools, can you take an objectively awful truck and make it perform better on the rocks? Stick around, let's find out. All right, we've made a bunch of changes. I spent four hours the other day fixing this thing up. 110 gram wheels on it, Tiger Dog tires, vastly better steering now. We've done some cutting away. We've lowered the actual chassis by moving the shock mounts up. We've lowered the body by moving the body post down. We've brought the bumpers in. We've done some cutting and trimming. I'm ready to see just how good this can be. We've spent minimal money. If you count the wheels and tires, that's another, what, say 20 or 30 bucks for the wheels and similar for the tires. Even just getting the center of gravity improved, I think will have a good effect. And getting that steering fixed, oh boy, it needed that. Let's get onto the problems and see how it goes. Problem one. Notice the front bumper is in closer. I couldn't get it any closer and I already had to drill some holes. The rear is in too and I've trimmed the body at each end to make it sit lower. We've lowered the body post by one hole. We still have clearance. There we go. Now the pinion, I only had one tooth less than the uh, default pinion, but I used that. <laughs> Bit of a three point turn. The steering is better. That's problem one, but a lot better largely because of the weight, but I quite like the rubber compounds. I would have actually used the original tires if I could, just with the heavier wheels, but they were glued and I just, I didn't want to take them off the original rims. Now this might want to flip here. We'll see how we go. We might make it. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's composed. Very nice. Very nice. This is the sketchy part. Ah, oh, and the low weight just barely kept it going. Look at that, problem two done. Now problem three is a tough one and I don't expect it to be able to get problem three, but for the sake of completion, we'll give it a go. Sometimes the geometry, particularly the wheelbase of a vehicle can just make it seem like it's just made to fit for this problem, but it is quite a technically difficult one. While we have a go at this, I'll tell you the steering is better. It's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was. Here's, here's our only chance, This, I think from this angle here. Or possibly if we get the back wheel up. Still using the stock servo. I also had to change the servo arm uh, just because I needed to get it to the outside <laughs> because it did, it, couldn't go far enough inside before. Can't do three, but I'll show you what I did with the steering. So I cut off the heavy nubs that were there and I also cut off the uh, limiting stops on the inside of the steering arm. And I drilled two small holes, one above and one below. We still have the one behind it, but now instead of just front and rear, I've got three spaced evenly and there's room for full throw. Now, a lot of people put a bent steering link here I was trying to keep this as budget as possible, so I simply got a blade and cut down some of the plastic from the diff housing, the diff pumpkin housing, so it can get full, full steering throw there. So we're at maximum throw. They are dog bones, but the little dog bones are staying inside the cups, just. Thankfully, they're actually quite thick cups, so that's a plus. And lastly, I've also dropped the mounting point of the shocks down a little bit, uh, sorry, up, which lowers the whole it lowers the whole vehicle down, so we've lowered it a shade. And straight into the very challenging problem four. Already it's easier, thankfully, thanks to the um, improved approach angle. Oh, that steering's better. It's still not what I'd call great, but it is considerably better than it was, isn't it? Oh, muffed it. I couldn't get far enough left then. The WP1040 has a sufficient uh, drag brake on it. <laughs> it's so light. Now the pinion, uh, just removing one tooth, having one tooth small pinion isn't enough really. Oh, I shouldn't have come off the throttle, should I? Really it wants a slower motor. The WP1040 ESC has sufficient drag brake. So if you're going to a higher turn motor, 
slower motor, you'll be fine. We'll just pop over this side and see if we can see what's going on a bit better. I wonder if that would have worked. Oh, we've lost drive. That's a breakage. Yeah. The uh, dog bone has snapped. It's a shame we're in three wheel drive. Well, can't say I'm surprised. Heavier wheels and tires, that's, that's gonna happen. The, uh, the dog bones snap, the actual axle this doesn't usually happen, usually the cup snaps, so it's a nasty, nasty cheap axle. Uh, that's a bummer. Right, so on to problem five. We're only in three wheel drive now. We haven't got the front right wheel. We just snapped the uh, axle. We've only got three out of four driving. As Adam showed at ECCF, the big comp at the end of March, uh, you can still get somewhere in three wheel drive, but You have your work cut out for you. So this is a this is a good uh, a good test of the axles really. Clearly, if you get this truck, stay with the stock wheels and tires. Because I have slowed this truck down, so we're not um, we're not putting more power through it or anything. We literally just have heavier wheels and grippier tires, and the tires are the same diameter as the stock ones. I actually would have preferred to have used the stock one, stock tires on these wheels, but I didn't want to, uh... I didn't want to uh, undo the, the glue. I just wanted to leave those tires intact. Well, I reckon we would have got problem five in four wheel drive. Pretty unlikely in three-wheel drive, especially with the uh, the load-bearing side being gone. <laughs> oh boy! Well, we're not even going to try problem six because after snapping that axle, that's really all she wrote. These wheels aren't all that heavy; they're 110 grams. The Honor Tiger Dogs are very good tires; they're really cheap as well. So my mods were actually quite cheap, and I was going to tell you all about it. Given we just did problem one, problem two, we would have got five, I reckon, as well, if, if not for being in uh, three-wheel drive. So from going from no problems to, say, three to four problems out of six, that's an excellent improvement. In summary, there's one less tooth on the pinion. I've mounted the shocks one hole higher to the highest point, which brings the entire chassis down lower. Uh, I also lowered the body by one hole on the posts front and rear. I cut some of the body out so it could do that. I also drilled some more holes in these, bull, uh, in these bumper mounts so I could bring them in some more. So now we have a lowered car, a shorter car, same wheelbase, heavier wheels, grippier tires, slightly slower motor, and lastly better steering, having cut off those, uh, the lug on the outside and the limiting end stops, putting two screws instead, and now having far better reach. Oh, and I had to replace, I had to make my own little front arm. Didn't cost anything, but you know, it's a buck or three in parts just to get the arm to the outside because the inside it was hitting against the servo now that it had that extra throw physically. So mechanically overall, quite good. Apart from those weak cheese metal axles. And look, if you haven't got an intact axle, what have you really got? This has been my experience with RC4 drive stuff recently too. You can have a beautiful car, but if you haven't got motion from your four-wheel drive, what's it all for? I can't recommend this car. Yes, it might have been a freak accident. It is pretty cold today, but that shouldn't really affect metal, not really. Eh, it's a shame too, because the, I'm actually pretty happy with it. My next mod would have been to stick a lower turn motor on there, because the ESC will handle it just fine lower turn motor and you'd be set. 
great little budget truck once you do those things. It took me a few hours to do all the bits that I just described to you, uh, but gee, it was worth it. But if you can't trust the axles, then what are we doing? I will show you a photo because I just realized I forgot to do that. I'll compare this to, you, to the uh, 136 100 V2 just side by side because a few of you guys were saying how similar it was. Uh, and that'll be the end of that for this little HSP boxer. Yeah, it's cheap. I think it's too cheap. Get a 136 100 V2 if you want a really cheap one. Look at the Remo Hobbies thing. We've still actually got another video to do on that. That was another really cheap one, actually cheaper than this. Uh, and maybe skip this one, just give it a miss. The cheap radio, the awful steering, the weak axles, the fast motor, it's just, it's enough in my book to just make it not worth it. So this one goes in the box and I'll uh, think about fixing it up enough to give to someone I don't like or something. Uh, I'll catch you next time, guys. Thank you for watching, I appreciate your time.